This year, Many Worlds Productions decided to sign up for the Four Points Film Project, an international competition where you make a short film in 72 hours. On Friday night, you get a genre, a line of dialogue, a prop, and a character, all of which need to be included in the film. And you have three days to write, shoot, and edit it. For genre, we got fantasy or period piece. So we decided to make a piece set in medieval times with a story that includes a fantasy. Several weeks before, we made a plan to use virtual production, no matter what genre we got or what the story was about. Without even having a script, there was only so much pre-production we could do, but we did as much as we could. We knew we would do all the live shots with a rear projected background and just shoot the actors from the waist up and use some digital doubles of the actors for the long shots. All the backgrounds and animation would be done in Unreal Engine, which meant we could set them up and render them very quickly once we had our story together. And we were going to use voiceover as much as possible so we could focus on the visuals and not worry too much about synchronized sound. In the weeks before the competition, we taped garbage bags over every window in the studio so it would be dark as can be for the projected image. We also lined up a lot of possible virtual locations and did a lot of test shots with the projector. We also chose our cast and crew weeks ahead of time. We decided to keep it pretty tight, with just six crew on set and a remote graphics person, so seven people in all. The two main actors count as crew because they helped out when they weren't on camera. We're all friends from an improv troupe and we've worked together before, so this also meant that our actors are used to performing without a lot of rehearsal and can do pretty much anything, which is very handy for a 72-hour film project. For the voiceovers, we set up a sound booth up in our loft where we could just sit down and record voiceover very quickly. After we chose our main actors, we had them come over so we could explain what we were doing. While they were there, we scanned their faces so we could make digital doubles of them for the long shots. Finally, it was game time. We got the genre and required character, and a few of us spent a couple of hours fleshing out a story that we could tell with the virtual production setup and voiceover. We decided to do a modern twist on a fairy tale set in medieval times. Here at the studio, we already had some medieval type costumes and massive amounts of fabric and lace and fancy buttons. The required prop was eye drops, and Dave, our Unreal Engine tech, happened to know how eye drops were administered hundreds of years ago. He dug out an antique bottle from his stash of prop stuff, and we used an awl as the dropper. We worked out that the Duke would say the required line, I really cannot wait to see how this turns out when he's getting fitted for his coat in the last scene. While we were talking about the story, Dave started scouting around for good virtual locations in Unreal Engine for the tailor shop and the castle. Then at about 9 p.m., our story team went home, and I spent about three hours banging out a script. I got up early on Saturday and made a shot list, trying to keep it to as few locations as possible. Then around 10 o'clock, the cast and crew showed up, and we got to work shooting the scenes. One of the challenges of this type of virtual production setup is that each background needs to be white balanced separately as it's projected on the screen. And sometimes that balance changes the color temperature so much that when the actor steps into frame, they turn very red or very blue or sometimes green. We solved that with a two-pronged approach. One was to make the Unreal Engine scene more red or blue to kind of fool the white balance and the other was to light the actors with yellow or blue lighting or whatever to counteract the effect. The trick was getting the skin tone close enough to real that I knew that if I had to, I could do a final touch-up with color correction in post. The cast and crew really got a kick out of the whole process. One of our hacks was for lighting the campfire scenes. Dave found a phone app that produces flickering yellow and orange light, and we had everyone download it 
and hold up their phones to the actor while we did the shot. The subtle play of flashing colors added a nice dimension to those scenes, and everyone on the crew could say that they played a part in making that happen. The shooting went so smoothly that I had time to add another scene, where a cat, the seamstress, is walking through the marketplace on her way to work. We got Carrie, our script supervisor, to put on this wig. It's a really short scene, but it helps establish the time and place the film is set in. And Carrie, of course, being a member of our improv troupe, pulled it off with minimal direction. The shot was finished in about 15 minutes, and most of that time was spent with me messing around with the positioning of the background, the market stalls. That was the beauty of using Unreal Engine for the backdrop. You can reposition anything on the fly, and it just takes a few seconds. Shooting the scenes and recording all the voiceover took about seven hours, and then the cast and crew went home. Now that we had all the live footage in the can, it was time to work on the graphic elements. One of the themes is that Kat, the seamstress character, has a very active fantasy life. And in her lifetime, most of what she knew of the world beyond her village would have come from looking at tapestries. So I thought it was important to show the tapestries that would have sparked her imagination. But where would we find tapestries on short notice? For that, I went to an AI image generator. I spent a couple of hours in Midjourney AI to generate a bunch of tapestries with different themes like medieval battle and a duke dressed as a peasant and so on. I also used Midjourney AI to generate the crest for the handkerchief. And then I sent the crest off to Dan, our remote graphics person, to composite onto photos of the handkerchief for when we see it on screen. Dave also put together some more shots for the fantasy sequences and another outdoor shot of a meadow, which he built from scratch in just a few hours. Then I got to work editing. This is the boring part, there's not much to see. Just me moving around bits and pieces and trying to make it come together. So Monday, more editing and more editing. Dave touched up some of the Unreal Engine animations and he found all the music and sound effects we needed. Dan made some medieval credits and we pulled it all together. The film was due at midnight and we turned it in at 11 p.m. And we loved the way it came out. Would we do it again? We can't wait to do it again. We love our virtual production setup, and we hope we can inspire some other indie studios to try it out too.